In today's video, we are going to talk about how to create your first Android application with Android Studio, Android Studio tutorial for beginners. Myself Mohammad Zubair and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's see and let's get started that how we can create a simplest of application for beginners. So first of all, we need to create a new project into our Android Studio. In your case, if you are using the Android Studio for the first time after the installation, you will have the option to create a new project. Otherwise, go to your files and from here, go to your new and in here, as you can see, it says new project. Just click on it here. We have a lot of activities that we can choose. For example, let's say you are going to develop an application in which you will have Google Maps activity. For that purpose, you will select Google Maps activity from here. Then you have Google Pay activity, full screen activity and a lot more options. But now we'll stick with the empty activity. So just click on this one, then click on next. Now. Here you need to give the name to your application. The name that you are going to set here will be there for the rest of your application development. So make sure what do you want to give. I will give it as skills build. Then here we have package name. You can change it, but I would recommend you to go with the default one. Then here we have the location means where this project is going to get saved. After that, we have language. We have two language, Java and Kotlin. Go with the Java and then we have the minimum SDK. At the moment, the set value is Android 5.0 Lollipop. It means my application will be supported for all those devices that are running at least Lollipop. If I scroll up here, I have my Jelly Bean. For example, if I go with my Jelly Bean, now my application will be supported for all those devices that are running at least Jelly Beans Android on their devices. But I want to go with Lollipop. So that is why I'll select 5.0 version. Here it is. You can go with anyone as per your liking. As it says, your app will run on approximately 98% of devices. Now just click on finish and we have successfully created our first project. It will take some time for the first time because it will build a lot of things. As you can see here, it says Gradle build. So that is why it will take a little bit of time to load everything out. After we are done with this one, I'll explain everything to you that what do we get by default and how to create our layout. So these are the default folders that we get after creating our first project. This is the main activity dot Java class in this file. We will have all of our business logics means we will code everything related to Java in this file. Then we have our activity underscore main dot XML. In this file, we'll create our layouts. As you can see, we have different widgets like button, image view, fragment controller. Then in terms of text, we have a lot of options. We have buttons, layouts, containers, and many more things. So we'll use some of these to create our first new layout. And then I'll show you that how you can create your layout through the code as well. So we have two choices. Either we can use drag and drop or we can create our layout with the help of code. Here we have code section. Here we have design section. And in case if you want to see the live results, just click on split. So whatever you will code in here for your XML, you can see the live result in here. I'll stick with the design at this moment and then I'll show you what do we have next. In case if you do not get these two files by default, just open your application which is right here that says app. Make sure you have selected the Android option from here. Then under the app, go to your Java, then go to your com.example.skills build and in here we have main activity file. Just double click on it and it will open up. For your activity main.xml file where you will create your layouts, go to your resource folder, 
go to your layouts and here we have activity underscore main now let's say i want to create one more java file or i'm going to create an application in which i might have to use more than one java files for that just right click here and from here go to new and here it says java class just click on it and you will be able to create new java class in your project now here we have activity underscore main let's say you want to add some of the images in your layout for that purpose we have a folder that says drawable and in here we have these two images by default now i want to add the image of skills build onto my application for that we do not have the image in here so first of all we need to import or we need to copy paste that image in this drawable folder and only then we'll be able to use that image so this is the image that i want to use i will just right click on it and i will copy this one now in my drawable folder i will right click on it and i will just click on paste here here make sure that you select the folder drawable note the version 24 click on ok and name it anything but make sure you do not use any uppercase letter while naming your images and your widgets after that click on ok and here we have successfully imported our image here now it's time to use our widgets and create our layout so first of all go to your common and here we have palette if you do not see this here it might be like this so just click on in here that says palette and you will have everything so first of all i'll use my image view because i want to set an image for my layout so just drag and drop it onto your layout here you have options that which one you want to import and use i want to use this one click this one okay and here we have successfully imported our image i want to tell you one thing and that is all the widgets are constrained layout first of all we need to constrain all of them towards every side of our screen and only then we'll be able to use them perfectly so let me resize this one and then i'll show you what i'm talking about so i will just resize it and now i will constrain it towards the every section of my screen so just drag it this side drag it this side drag it this side and make sure you drag it towards the upper side of your screen as well now i can move my widget at any place onto my layout now i will drag my image and i will set it on my screen now i will resize it well to resize your images and your any widgets you have two options either you can set the values from here like we have width we have height or you can drag and drop it for its resizing here you can see i am resizing it by just dragging and dropping it we have one more way just go to your code section and in here as you can see we have our image view and in that we have our layout width layout height so you can have your manual width and height for your image or for any widget but i'm okay with my image now i'll go back to my design and i'm okay with this one now here is the hello world which is a label and it is here by default just click on it and i will delete this one now we are good with our image view now let's move ahead and let's add some more things well i'm going to create an application that will add two numbers given by the user so first of all we need to have some field where we can get the input from the user i'll go to my text and here i have my text view field i'll just drag it and drop it onto my screen well here as it says number it means it will only take the positive number in case you also want to go with the negative number just go with number signed as i'm going with number in here now if the user adds the negative value my application will crash so for that i have to do the error handling but for time being i'm only going to use numbers and i'm going to create the simplest of application so again we need to constrain this widget towards every side of our layout so let me do that i'll do it towards the right side and i will do it towards the left side as well now i can move it and i can place it at any place onto my screen so i'm okay with this one now let's have another one and i will drag it and i will drop it right under it now again we need to constrain it 
Now I will place it right under it and I'll make sure that it is aligned with the first one. So in here we will have our first input value and in the second one we will have our second input value. So we are done with this one. Now we should have a button that will add these two values on clicking on it. So for that I'll go to my button section and in here, here I have button. I'll just drag it and I'll drop it right under my text fields. Now again, I will constrain it towards every side of my layout so that I can place it and I can use it perfectly. So we are left with the left side only. Now I'll drag it and I will drop it right under my text field. So here we are, we are good to go. Now we need to have a field where we can see the result. Means if I click on my button here, I should have a section where I can see the answer. For that, we need to have text field. And here we have text view. I will just drag it and I will drop it. Again, we need to constrain it towards every corner or you can say toward every side of our layout. So I'll just do that. So I'll constrain it towards the left side as well. I'm good to go now. I'm not satisfied with the size of this one in here. For that purpose, I'll resize it. I can resize it from here as well from my code section or I can just drag it and I can resize it. So I'll just drag it. I'm okay in here. And if you see the text view, which is written inside it is very minimal in size. I can increase its size for that purpose. If I go to my code section here, I have my text view and in here just write text size. And here it is. You do not need to write all of the code. Just write here text size and Android Studio is smart enough to give you the answer in here. Let's say I want to go with 32 dp. Just press Ctrl S, save everything, go back to your design. And here if you see, we have the enhanced text size now. But as you know that we are using this one for our answer. So I do not want to see text view written in here. I want to see answer in here written by default. So from here we can change its value. I will write here answer and the text is not in black color to change it. I'll go back to my code and again in here, I will write text color. Here it is. Again, you do not need to write anything and I'll use the black one. Now press control S and go back to your design. And here, if you see, we have our value in the black color. So how cool and how easy it is now. We are done with creating our layout. It's time to have our virtual device. Before we move ahead, I want to discuss a very important thing in here. And that is if I click on any of these widgets here, it says ID. It means this is the ID that will get used to extract the values from these widgets. For example, obviously I will use these two fields to add my numbers, but how I will extract those numbers from these two fields. Obviously I need to have something. So for that, I need to have some ID of this field that I can use to extract the value from this one. So make sure you use the IDs very carefully. At the moment, I'm only using four widgets like these two. Then I have my button. Then I have my text view. That is why I do not have to worry about anything at all. But in your case, let's say you are going to create an application that is going to have a lot of widgets then make sure you use the numbering or you use the naming conventions for your IDs very carefully. So before we move towards our virtual device, I want to delete this text that comes under it. It says to do, I'll go to my code section and in my edit text section here, it says to do, I will just leave it blank here or I can write here, enter first number. Then I'll do the same for my second edit text field. I will just copy this one and here it is. It says to do, I will write here, enter second number. Let's have a color for it as well. For that again, I will just write here text color. And in that I'll use the black one. I'll copy this one and I will use it for my first input field as well. So paste it anywhere in your first edit text. I will paste it right under the first number. So we are good to go. Now, if I go back to my design, so here, if you see, we have our enter first number, then we have enter our second number. And now let's move ahead and let's have our virtual device. 
To have a virtual device, here we have our AVD manager. At the moment, I am already using Pixel 5. I have already created it. If you just click on this drop down arrow, here it says device manager. From here, you can create your new device for testing your application. Well, basically you have two options. Either you can create a virtual device or you can use your own device like your mobile phone or your tablet. For that purpose, you have to go to your developer mode in your device and then you have to attach your phone with wire or any way with your laptop so that your Android Studio can use that device as the output. Now, as I am using this device, which is the virtual one, I will have all the outputs and I will have all the testing on this virtual device. You can also go with your actual device as well as I have just mentioned. Now to create your device, just click on create device. From here, select any device as per your liking. This is the size of your device that you will have, your resolution, your density and all those information that are necessary. Let's go with Pixel 2 XL. This is the screen size, resolution and density. Select this one, click on next. Now after that, you need to select the API level. The latest one is 32 in here, but I'll recommend you to go with two or three level lower because in the latest one, you might have some dependencies issues. So it is better to go with two or three level down. So just select anyone and just click on download. After that, it will get downloaded and you will be able to finish your virtual device and you will have one in your Android Studio for your testing and checking your application that you are developing. So I have already created it, so I'll not use it and I will not create it anymore. I'll just click on cancel. Now I'll just start this virtual device. So just click on this launch this AVD in the emulator. Here it is, it says starting AVD. So it will launch my virtual device and I can see the output of my layout and my application in that virtual device. I'll minimize my device manager so that I can have maximum view. Our device is up and running. Now we need to run our project that we have just created in our Android Studio so that we can have the output in our virtual device. For that, just click on this run app button or press shift F10. And here it is building my Gradle. After that, it will install the app into my virtual device in my emulator and then my app will run on its own. And then we will have the output of our layout and we can check if there is anything to change or anything to update. We are done with building our Gradle. So now it has just launched the activity and let's see what do we have in here. So if you see here, we have all those widgets that we use to create a layout of our application and we have everything here just like we pretended. There is some issue with the alignment. I'll set it and I'll get back to you and then we'll go back for our business logic so that we can add two numbers in our application. So I think it is looking much better now. Now let's go to our main activity.java file and let's create the business logic for this application. This is my main activity.java. I'll minimize my emulator at the moment. Now let's create some of the variables for our widgets. Obviously we need to have some variables to accept the values from those widgets. So first of all, I'll use private the first widget that we used was edit text here it is just hit enter and name it anything if you remember we used the first edit text for the input that is why i will write here num1 we are done with our first variable for our first widget now let's have the second variable for our second input text field that was edit text so I will just write here edit text and I will use the variable as num2. Enter your semicolon, hit enter. Now if you remember, we had a button after our edit text field. So I'll just write here private button and I will name it as add. And at the end, we had a text view field for our answer. So I will write here private text view. Here it is, hit enter and name it anything. I will name it as answer. Use your semicolon and we are good with declaring our variable for our layout and for our project. The next thing that we need to do is we need to assign those variables to the IDs of our widgets in our XML layout. 
Yes, we have successfully created the variables, but at the moment, there is no relationship between this number one and the widgets that we had used. So now we need to create a relationship. So for that purpose, go into your own create method and in here we will have the relationship between our variables and our widgets so first of all i'll write here num1 equals in my brackets i will write here edit text which is the name of my widgets which is the first one and after that i will write here find view by id just write here find and it will take rest of the value on its own hit enter well basically it is referencing the layout to find the widgets by the IDs and assign them to the variables. If you remember, if I click on my first added text and if I go to attributes, this is its ID. So basically find view by ID is referencing to this one. Now I'll go back and in my brackets this time I will write here r.id. r is a file which has all the IDs of our XML layout. An ID obviously is the ID of our widgets and after that write here dot and write the ID of your widget. Well the ID for my first widget for my edit text was edit text number. I will just click on it or just hit enter. After that enter your semicolon and we are good with our first variable and our first ID for our first widget. We'll do the same for second one so I will just write here num2 equals in my brackets i will write here edit text find view by id r dot id dot edit text number two because this is my second field have your semicolon we are good with our first two values for my add button that will add those two numbers i will write here add equal because the variable name is add in here and this time the widget is button not text fields or not edit text just hit enter and after that same I will write here find view by ID and inside it just write r dot id dot button because the ID of this button is button with small letters write your semicolon hit enter and we are left with the last widget and that was answer so I will just write here answer equals again this time I will use text view because for our answer if you remember we use the text view Right here, find view by id, r dot id dot. Now, the id for my text view was text view. Just double click on it and after that, have your semicolon, press control s and save everything. So, as we know that, two numbers will only be get added when we click or tap on the add button. So, it means we need to do something on that button. So we will create a listener for our add button so that whenever it gets click on, it gets the values from our text fields and then it will add all of those. So first of all, we need to retrieve all the values from those variables. So let's have a listener for our add button. So I will just write here add dot set listener. Just press enter and inside your brackets, just write here new space and here it says view dot on click listener and then we have some braces and in braces we have some values so select the first one it will create a method for you as we are done with creating a listener for our add button now we need to retrieve all the values from those variables and input fields so here i will create some variables and i will store the values in those variable that I will retrieve from my text field. So for my first variable, I will write here int number one equals. Now I'll get the values from my num1. That is why I will write here num1 dot get text. Here it is. After that dot to string because I want to convert this value into my string. But at the moment, I'm not getting the values because I need to pass this value into int first. So for that purpose, I will write here integer dot parse int. Here it is. Make sure you have your brackets right. Only then you will be able to execute your program. Now, as you can see, we do not have any error. So basically, my number one will get the value from my edit text field one by its ID, which is edit text number. And then I'm storing that input value into my number one. I'll do the same for my number two, or you can say for my edit text field two as well. So I'll just write here int 
नंबर टू इक्वल्स इंटीजर डॉट पार्स एंड एंड इन साइड इट आई विल राइट हेयर नम टू डॉट गेट टेक्स्ट डॉट टू स्ट्रिंग सो वी आर गुड टू गो विद सेकेंड वन नाउ वी नीड टू एड दीज टू नंबर दैट वी आर गेटिंग सो फॉर दैट पर्पज आई यूज अ वेरिएबल एज इंट सम इक्वल्स नंबर वन प्लस नंबर टू सो वी आर सक्सेसफुली एडिंग दीज टू नंबर इन हेयर सो ऑब्वियसली एट द एंड वी नीड टू शो दैट एंसर ऑन आर स्क्रीन सो ऑब्वियसली वी आर यूजिंग अ वजट विद द आई डी ऑफ टेक्सट व्यू एंड दैट वैल्यू इज गेटिंग स्टोर इन एंसर सो आई विल राइट हेयर एंसर डॉट सेट टेक्सट बिकॉज नाउ वी आर नॉट रिट्रीविंग द वैल्यूज but we are giving the values or we are presenting the values so that is why we will write here set text and inside my brackets i will use my inverted commas and inside it i will write here the answer is give it a space get out of your inverted commas write here plus sign because plus sign gets used for concatenation means we are merging two things and after that i'll write here string dot value of and inside the brackets we need to pass this variable in which we will have the addition of these two number and the name of that variable is sum so we are good to go and we are done with all the business logics that were necessary to add these two numbers on to our android application press control s open your emulator which is right here now i will rerun my program and then we'll see if it is running or not at the moment it is building the gradle terminate this one because the earlier process was running again it will relaunch my activity as it has just done that now let's give it some values let's add the value for first number i'll add the value for my second number and i will just click on my button in here and if i minimize this one here it says the answer is 10 let's have another example this time i will write here 10 for my second value again i will write here 10 and if i click on this button i will minimize this one here it says the answer is 20 here we should have add written on this button do not worry that is really simple go back to your activity main.xml i will minimize my emulator and open your attributes click on your button and here go to its code here we have our button and here if you see it is button written on it i will just write here add press control s go back to your design and here if you see it says add now again i will rerun my program i will open my emulator in here here it ask us to terminate the previous program so just click on terminate i'll open my emulator it will relaunch my activity and my application and here if you see it says add in here now i will enter the values in here I will enter 12 and 13 click on add and here we have the answer as 25 one thing is here that is really important that I want to discuss that is if you miss values from any of these field let's say I write the value in my second field if I hit add button now my activity or my application will crash because we did not have any error handling into our application so for that purpose we should have error handling to make sure that our application do not crash at any moment other than that you can also have a lot of scenarios that will prevent your application from crashing and that brings us to the end of today's video please leave a like subscribe and press the bell icon we'll get back to you as soon as possible till the next video take care